Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. And coming up here on today's show, I'm going to be breaking down the winners and losers for the Silver and Black after their 17-16 win over the Denver Donkeys. If you want a programming schedule for the week, I'm going to be live Monday, which I'm actually live right now. And we're going to be live on Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Then we're going to be live for Thursday night football, Eagles, Vikings. We let our hair down. Think of it as Thursday happy hour type of show. And then live Sunday, Raiders, Buffalo Bills. Very important for all of Raider Nation to watch the Monday night football game tonight when the Jets and Bills play. That way we can get an early look at what the Raiders are going to be going up against next week. So what I want to do this show, this is all about honesty. Just because the Raiders won doesn't mean that I can't pick apart some of the players that didn't play as well. I love the fact that the Raiders got a big-time dub. I love the fact that they are number one in the AFC West. But they played their C game. How can we get to a B? How can we get to an A game to continue to chase that ultimate goal, which is a Lombardi trophy? So here we go. We're going to first start with the winners on offense, and then we'll go to the defensive side of the football. Jimmy Garoppolo has got to be a winner here. And all that people talk about at the quarterback position are wins and losses. That's what people care about. And when it mattered the most on third down and seven, Garoppolo used his legs to pick up a very clutch first down and seal the deal for the silver and black. He didn't do anything spectacular. He was 20 of 26 for 200 yards, two touchdowns, a pick. The interception was very, very costly. And when it happened, I was like, oh no, here we go again, more red zone drama. But what did he do? He put it behind him. Let a great touchdown drive late in the fourth quarter. Put the Raiders up 17-16, to come away with the dub. Maybe one of the biggest winners from this game, and I'm hoping that he's okay because Jacoby Myers, man, took a wicked, wicked hit. But, like, when you're the best receiver in a game and Devontae Adams is next to you, I mean, that I could. there you go, right? That's how good Jacoby Myers was yesterday against the Broncos. He saw 10 targets, 9 catches, 81 yards, and 2 touchdowns. He was the go-to guy for Jimmy G. But the reason is, is because if Patrick Sertan's going to be on Devontae Adams, that leads to more one-on-one -on -one opportunities for Jacoby Myers. And Myers took advantage of those opportunities and found the end zone twice. Well, let's go to another winner here. I'm going to give it to Devontae Adams because Devontae, even though he didn't put up the jaw-dropping stats that we are used to seeing from number 17, the reason why Jacoby got open as often as he did was because Denver was not going to allow Devontae to take the top off the defense, wasn't going to let Tay beat them. Because in years past, in last season, Devontae torched the Denver Broncos. Adams saw nine targets. He had six catches for 66 yards. But what I was really happy about were the amount of clutch catches that he made. I mean, think about the big-time catches he had yesterday against Denver, the big-time first downs that he picked up. And when he was being double-teamed, when Patrick Sertan was on him, that opened up a lot of other things for this Raiders offense to be able to move the football. That's why, to me, Devontae Adams is a big-time winner here for the Silver and Black. Then, the next winner, I'm just going to put it all together as a unit. I was very impressed by the Raiders' interior offensive line and Andre James, Dylan Parham. Greg Van Roten might have been the best offensive lineman in the game yesterday. I'm uh, we got to talk to Jermaine a little bit, that false start. I was impressed with their Munford. I thought Colton Miller did an okay job, but it was the pass blocking. The biggest question mark for a lot of Raider fans entering this game was, are we going to be able to keep Jimmy Garoppolo healthy? And when he left the game early because he got hit in the head, not because of the offensive line, a lot of us panicked a little bit, right? Two, two snaps from Brian Hoyer was a little too, too many, if you ask me. But the pass blocking was great. No sacks against Jimmy Garoppolo. And you got to be able to tip your cap to the big guys up front. So my question to all of you out there is this. Who was the Raiders offensive MVP yesterday against the Denver Broncos? This is going to be the pinned comment on today's show. I'm going to give you my answer after this YouTube ad break. The MVP of yesterday's game for the Las Vegas Raiders was Jacoby Myers. Myers was the best player on the field. And... When you think about, some people might say Jimmy Garoppolo because he's the quarterback. And Jimmy G deserves that credit. If I could say Jacoby Myers was 1A, Jimmy Garoppolo was 1B, both of those players deserve a lot, a lot of love. But I am going to tip my cap to Jacoby Myers and say that 
He was the MVP on offense for the Silver and Black. I also got an MVP out there. That's our brand new sponsor, Game Time. This is one of the most insane sponsors that we have ever had because life, man, it's just full, full circle. And the reason why I say that is because when I first moved down to Dallas, Texas, I used to use Game Time all the time because I was looking for cheap tickets right moving to a brand new city, whether it was sporting events, whether it was comedy, heck, whether it was even a concert, and now we have them as a show sponsor. So what I want you guys to do is show Game Time some love because this is one of the biggest sponsors we have ever gotten. Spam GT down in the comments section below to show our newest sponsor, Game Time, some love. And if you're like, Mitch, I know what Game Time is, then hey, listen up because we got one hell of a deal. And if anybody plans on going to some Raiders games this year, make sure you use Game Time. That way they know the Raiders report sent you. So you can get $20 off with code RaidersChat. And all you got to do is download the app, create an account, and redeem code RaidersChat for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Forget planning months in advance. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and a whole lot more. To me personally, I think this is the perfect app out there for anybody traveling to Las Vegas because when you go to Vegas, there's so much that you can do. And I already know that I'm going to be spending money anyway right, on drinks, on food, plane ticket out there. I want to be able to go to events that are at a discount. And I don't want to be handcuffed to certain plans when you're in Vegas. So you download the Game Time app right now. Make sure you use promo code Raiders Chat for $20 off. And then when it's a last minute event, bang, you can go to that event. If you plan on going to a Raiders game, it's the perfect thing to do that. I know some of y'all know a little bit more about my personal life and I bought tickets for the final Raiders preseason game down here in Dallas using the Game Time app, and I bought them for my fiance Alex's dad. I can't guarantee you that you know your father-in-law is going to like you, but I can guarantee you because of the discounts you're going to save with Game Time that he's going to really, really like the seats. So one of our viewers even shout out to Killer Cruz and said, if it wasn't for Game Time, I would have gotten, would not have gotten C17 row for $300 for the Raiders and Rams game. He was hyped. I'm hyped that they're here. And I think that you guys are also going to love them. So one more time, terms apply again. Create an account and redeem code RaidersChat for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Shout out to Game Time for sponsoring the Raiders report. All right, now let's go to some of the offensive losers. And I'm just going to put the whole rushing attack as a loser up against Denver because I don't think Josh Jacobs deserves the blame. And I've seen it on social media. That people are like, oh, you know, he, he stinks, this and that. Just stop it. The Broncos did a good job, and this is exactly how I would try to go up against the Las Vegas Raiders as well because I would stack the box, and that's what Denver did. They stacked the box. I gave my flowers to the Raiders' offensive pass blocking. They did not run block nearly as well. Jacobs, 19 carries, 48 yards, 2.5 yards per carry. Zamir White had one carry for two yards. I mean, the Broncos, when it came to going up against our rushing attack, they won. And for that, I'm going to make that a loser. Let's go to another offensive loser here. It's Hunter Renfro. And to get no targets and to be paid $13 million is a little bit of a head scratcher. When Josh McDaniels was asked today why he didn't get more opportunities, McDaniels just kind of said, you know, in different games, there's going to be different opportunities, certain ma matchups. We're going to take advantage of where we think we need to take advantage of. I'm going to tell you this right now. If you're going to be paying a guy $13 million at wide receiver, you need to start using him more. If you're like, no, we don't need to, then I think you should have figured out a better way to be able to get a trade offer for Hunter Renfro to use that money maybe on the defensive side of the football because I can figure out a lot of ways to use 13 mil. And then the last loser didn't even play. It's Trey Tucker. Like, to me... Very, very frustrated, and I want to know why Trey Tucker was a was an active. Like, I get that this Raiders organization is excited about Christian Wilkerson. That's great. I'm happy Christian Wilkerson made this 53-man roster. But Christian Wilkerson's not going to have a major future here with this team. He's an okay player. I wanted to see more pre-snap. I wanted to see our third-round rookie move around the football field because all I've been hearing and seeing is, this kid's electric. This kid, when he touches the ball, things are going to happen. He commands respect because of his acceleration, because of his ability to be able to stretch the field. I want to see all of that work, and even if he doesn't touch the football, he can make an impact. 
Trey Tucker is a loser, but it's just because he didn't play. And more, I'm pointing my finger at McDaniels because I wanted to see the rookie out there. We are about to get into now the defensive side of the football, but we got some winners and losers. And man, there was one man, he was the MVP of yesterday's show. If y'all don't shout out Brandon Jasper, the great tuna, I don't know what you got to do. Brandon dropped over 3K on our stream yesterday. Is now a member of Mount Raider Moore, and he wasn't the only one that showed love. I love doing this show. I love hanging out with the nation. There is nothing I would rather do watching a Raiders game, hanging out with my people. But here were everyone a part of our bang gang, as I like to call it, on our Raiders stream yesterday. If you see your name up here, you send in a $100 super chat, and I really appreciate that. Raider Ron also was a part of this list, but Taino, Dustin, John, Brandon, Fat Bearded Dad, Venthrick, Patrick B, Adam Sweeney, Zane to save your tribe, and Raider Ron, from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate you, and I know that not every single person can send in a super chat, but you can click that like button, you can comment, you can share the video, and if you continue to do all that stuff, this show is going to continue to grow and grow and grow. Let's now go to the defensive winners here against the Broncos. It's Max Crosby. I mean, it's it's the Max Crosby show. He is death, taxes, and Max Crosby showing up on game day. The Raiders had 10 pressures yesterday against Denver. Crosby had six of them. If the silver and black could get somebody to help him out on the defensive line, I would love to see the numbers that he puts up. Five tackles, a tackle for loss. He had a sack, two quarterback hits, and he was just embarrassing. I mean, embarrassing the right tackle for the Denver Broncos, who they just paid a crap ton of money to. And when he wanted to, he was beating them. Giggity. Up and down the field, slapping around. I mean, he was doing everything he wanted to to that right tackle. And what's even funnier is I, I think Max leads the league in holds that aren't called because it amazes me how he gets held the way he does and no flags come out. Max is an absolute legend. Max is an absolute stud. He's the best defensive end in football. I don't care what anyone says. Let's go to another winner here. It's Nate Hobbs as a corner. And, you know, this is one of those things where I, I kind of laugh a little bit because sometimes NFL coaches get a little bit too cutesy. Nate Hobbs is a rookie in the slot. Looks like one of the best slot corners in the league. And then somebody goes, well, maybe we should put him as an outside corner. And then he goes, I don't know, doesn't have nearly the successful season. Well, he's back in the slot this year. He had 12 tackles. He was flying all over the football field. Two tackles for loss. Zero pass breakups, but a pretty nice QB hit. Teams weren't throwing his way. And when he did give up a completion, it was for minor, minor yards. I'm a big believer if it's not broken, don't fix it. And Nate Hobbs in the slot as a rookie was not broken. And it still looks like he's going to be an incredible player because what a hell of a game by Nate Hobbs yesterday. Let's go to another defensive winner. We talked a lot this offseason about the linebacker position. Robert Spillane is a liability in coverage. He is. Yes, he performed well in the preseason. Yes, he performed well in joint practices. But the reason why Spillane is on this list is because you can see right away, very intelligent player. And when times got tough, a lot of people were looking at him for big time situations. His ability to stop the run, if you're going to have really bad defensive tackles like the Raiders do, you need to be able to have a run stopper out there like Spillane. I was very impressed from what I saw from him from a run stopping ability, hoping he gets a little bit better in terms of coverage, but you have a middle linebacker right now. A lot of people hit that panic button, me included, when the Raiders did not bring back Denzel Perriman. Robert Spillane, if he plays the way that he did yesterday, he's going to make a lot of people forget about Mr. Perriman. And then the final defensive winner is Divine Diablo. I uh, I probably owe owed Divine a little bit of an apology. When I was watching the game yesterday, you know, you don't see as much. You go back and you watch the film, and you're like, all right, Divine's flying all over, all over the football field. He had one really bad play. The face mask cost the Raiders. If the Raiders lose, my opinion on Divine is probably a little bit different. But since the Raiders won, hey, let's celebrate it. But, I mean, you can make a legit argument. He was the best defensive player on the field yesterday, minus Nate Hobbs, minus Max Crosby. He had nine tackles. He had a tackle for loss. His pass breakup, which is not getting talked about nearly enough, I and mean, that was a touchdown-saving PBU, which 
I don't even know how he deflected it. It was a laser beam from five yards away from Russell Wilson. Dude totally lays out, knocks down the football. You saw the athletic ability. He was a good run stopper. He was great in coverage. Divine did all of the right things minus one very, very costly face mask call. And that's really what a lot of people are talking about. But Divine, you deserve your flowers, my guy. So what do you think here? Who was the Raiders' defensive MVP? I just listed a few winners here, but I got to know from all of y'all, who was the Raiders defensive MVP? And you are about to get hit with another YouTube ad break, and I'm going to give you my answer right here in a second. The defensive MVP for the Raiders was not Max Crosby. Does he deserve credit? No doubt about it. It was not Divine Diablo. Does he deserve credit? Yes. The defensive MVP to me was Nate Hobbs. His ability to fly all over the football field. He was always around the football, and that's why to me, Nate Hobbs deserves that crown as defensive MVP. Now, we got to go to the loser side, and unfortunately, even when you win a football game, you got to talk about the losers on defense. Trevon Merrick, I think the biggest loser in this game for the Raiders on defense was Merrick. He did hurt his thumb. He did not start in the second half. They had Roderick Teamer out there. Where, but then Merrick came out with the club, gave up a touchdown. My biggest concern was how is he going to be able to cover? How is he going to look in the secondary? And it, it, it did not look good yesterday against a bad Broncos receiving core. If Merrick wants to stay on the field, he's got to figure it out really, really quick. Because if I'm the Raiders, yeah, I'm thinking about Chris Smith. Yeah, I'm thinking about Roderick Teamer. I, hell, I, I don't know why the Raiders haven't picked up the phone and given Deron Harmon a call yet. Because he might be a better fit than Merrick right now in the secondary. Another loser's got to be Luke Masterson. And... Considering how all the other linebackers played for this team, you know, he was probably one of the worst linebackers that played yesterday, but that roughing or running into the kicker penalty, which gave the Broncos that automatic first down, it doesn't get any more boneheaded than that. McDaniels, after the game, said, you know, he liked the fire, the tenaciousness that his team was playing with and flying all over the football field, trying to be aggressive. But when you're just not being smart, I'm not going to say, oh, well, at least he's going out there and he's hustling. If that would have cost them, that penalty was one of the most costly penalties I've seen by a Raiders team in a very, very long time. Let's go to another loser here on the defensive side of the football, Tyree Wilson. I, I don't know if somebody put weights in his shoes. I, I don't know if he was running on sand when everyone else was running in grass. But when you're drafted at number seven overall, the microscope is always going to be on you, especially when you're a member of the Las Vegas Raiders and they have missed on their first round picks the way that they have. Wilson's first step was slow. Wilson's second step was slow. Tyree Wilson was slow in general. You're not going to be able to compete at a high level when you're as slow as a Wilson is. Is the power there? Yes. Is he athletic and you can tell that he's strong? Yes. But if you don't have a good first step and you don't have a good second step in the NFL, you're not winning in the league. And he better figure it out really, really quick because from what I saw yesterday, he's not healthy. I don't want to say I hope he's not healthy, but he doesn't look healthy. And if he is 100% healthy and he's that slow, somebody needs to get in the lab with him and start working on his technique. The final thing is the Raiders' defensive tackles. Like, I'm so frustrated in the idea that we sit here second year in a row. Shit, maybe it's the third year in a row, and I'm like, the Raiders' biggest weakness is defensive tackle. Chandler Jones isn't on the field, is what it is, right? So you're, now you're going to roll out. At one time, they had three defensive tackles on the field. Yes, Jerry Tillery ended up getting a sack when he was playing as defensive end, but they were a lot better when he was playing inside. But, like, Tillery did not have a very good game. John Jenkins, Bilal Nichols, Adam Butler, like, nobody really played well at defensive tackle, and... They got beat up front, and if you're going to get beat up front and you can't get pressure off the quarterback, like, I'm sorry, it's going to be a long season. Thank the Lord that the Raiders have Max Crosby because if they didn't have one of the best defensive ends in football, quarterbacks, hell, Russell Wilson still might be sitting back there. I want to see more Nesta Jade Silvera this upcoming week against the Buffalo Bills. Now, if you guys made it this far in the video, I appreciate each and every one of y'all. We are live right now, and we there is some news that just happened. So if you missed the news, make sure you tune in live. Make sure you're watching because I want to keep you up to date here on the Raiders Report.